Today we are going to talk about the risks of treating trauma. In the current meta-analysis, we aimed to investigate the impact of secondary trauma on the psychopathology of mental health care providers. For a better understanding of the subject, we are going to talk about the theoretical background. It is a known fact that trauma occurs when an individual is exposed to death, death threats, serious injury, or sexual violence. This kind of exposure to traumatic events possesses risk of developing psychiatric disorders. Indirect exposure to stories about trauma, to graphic content, or to people that suffer from PTSD can lead to secondary trauma. The effects of secondary trauma are conceptualized in literature as secondary traumatic stress, compassion fatigue, or vicarious trauma. Although they are used interchangeably, these concepts have differential characteristics. First of all, secondary traumatic stress overlaps with PTSD symptoms, such as flashbacks, avoidant responses, or physiological arousal. Compassion fatigue is the diminished capacity of a professional to have compassion after being repeatedly exposed to patient trauma and suffering. Vicarious trauma acts like a complex countertransference, and it affects cognitive schemas related to safety, trust, self-esteem, intimacy, and control. Secondary trauma also has implications concerning other clinical symptoms and psychopathologies such as depression, anxiety, or PTSD. The mutual factor in these associations are the activating events, or the traumatic events. So why is this meta-analysis important? Well, prior meta-analytic studies have focused on healthcare providers, gender differences in prevalence of secondary trauma, risk factors in developing secondary trauma, and its association to burnout. Now moving on to the objectives of this meta-analysis. The first objective was to assess the overall effect size of the relationship between secondary trauma and psychopathology. Then the second objective pertained to the identification and investigation of the potential theoretical and methodological moderators found in this relationship. So in this respect, the current meta-analysis aims to investigate the impact of secondary trauma found as secondary traumatic stress, compassion, fatigue, or vicarious trauma on the mental health condition of the mental health providers depending on variables such as work experience or gender, among others. On to the methodological part of this meta-analysis. I'm gonna start by displaying the inclusion criteria we used. And one of the first criteria of inclusion was that the studies had to be written in English or French. We also looked at the sample and we wanted the sample to consist of mental health providers. And by mental health providers meaning clinicians, psychotherapists, counselors, social workers, or medical psychiatric professionals. We also looked at the way secondary trauma was operationalized, and we wanted it to be operationalized as secondary traumatic stress, compassion fatigue, or vicarious trauma. And one of the last inclusion criteria um, we had was the way the clinical symptomatology was evaluated and we wanted the evaluation to have been made with standardized instruments meaning the instruments used had a Kronbach alpha bigger than 0.7 the search we did in databases took part between december 2020 and january 2021 and we started off with quite a big amount of studies uh, we had after the first search in all of the databases uh, we had around 2,259 studies. And after the screening and after the assessment for eligibility, we ended up with 18 studies. Now, talking about the analysis that we used in this meta-analysis, uh, all the st statistical analysis were conducted using comprehensive meta-analysis and we based uh, them upon Pearson coefficient 
of correlation. The mean effect, size, uh, effect sizes were extracted from correlation indices and sample sizes, and we expected a high degree of heterogeneity. Uh, also, the pooled size effects were calculated using the random effects model. The heterogeneity was tested with 12 statistics, uh, which basically reflects the percentage of the observed heterogeneity. We also applied a meta regression uh, to test for moderation. Now, moving on to the results part of this presentation. As we expected, found a high, high global effect size of 0 0.55, which was statistically significant. And about the heterogeneity, as we estimated before, we found a high degree of heterogeneity of 95%. We also used the procedure remove one, to see the impact of each study on our meta-analysis. And after applying this procedure, no changes have been observed on the values that we got, on the results that we got of the meta regression we applied to test for any moderation we have found none of the moderators we proposed to have a significant relationship to assess whether there was a publication bias or not we first inspected the funnel plot and we found that there was no bias of publication then we applied the procedure trim and fill of Duval and Tweedy, and it also showed that there was no publication bias. And lastly, we applied the eager tests for asymmetry, which uh, showed a non-significant statistical result. Our data helps in raising awareness about a often overlooked phenomenon that affects mental health care workers, and that is indirect traumatization. The risks of treating trauma and working with clients and patients that suffer from trauma should be taken more seriously, and more studies should be done with improvements concerning gender percentage, the use of more specific samples, for example, only psychotherapists or only social workers, the instruments used for measuring secondary trauma, the possible protective factors, and a better conceptualization of the effects of secondary trauma. There are implications of this study with regard to improving the working conditions of mental health care providers. The strategies should focus on protective factors such as greater organizational support, building a safer workplace, a higher level of compassion satisfaction, and avoiding working overtime or exhaustion. So, the current meta-analysis reached its goal of confirming the relationship between secondary trauma and psychopathology, and we hope that future studies will address more of this topic. This was our presentation, and thank you for your time.